Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as we approach uh, April 21st this year, uh, that is a day of importance to those of us who are from Texas. Uh, April 21st in Houston, for when I was growing up, was a holiday. Uh, my mother, who was also born on April the 21st, used to tell me and my sister that we had a school holiday because it was her birthday. Uh, I didn't learn that that wasn't really correct until I got to seventh grade Texas history, when I learned that April 21st was to commemorate a battle that took place in Texas, which we now call San Jacinto Day. Most Americans have never heard of that, but that event, April 21st, 1836, is of historical significance not only to Texans, but really to all Americans. Uh, Texas was uh, first controlled by the nation of France up until 1689. And then the Spanish government country took over the control of what we now call Texas and controlled it for over 130 years until uh, 1821, 1690 to 1821. The nation of Mexico revolted against Spanish oppression and 1821 uh, became a republic of itself and Texas belonged to Mexico until 1836. Texas declared independence on March the 2nd, 1836. And then we had April 21st, 1836, the day of Battle of San Jacinto. Well, let me back up a little bit and explain why Texas revolted against Mexico, how it became an independent country for nine years, and then later joined the United States. Mr. Speaker, here is a map of what Mexico looked like in about 1821, after Tec or Mexico had revolted from Spain. And it all happened because of the person who took charge of Mexico. His name was Santa Ana. Santa Ana became president of Mexico uh, in the 1820s and quickly made himself dictator of Mexico. He was supported by the military. He became the military dictator. He abolished the Constitution of Mexico. He abolished Congress of Mexico. And not all of the people in Mexico approved it. In fact, 11 different states in Mexico revolted against this dictatorship. A lot of times in Mexican or world history, we don't talk about the other revolts in Mexico because of this dictator, because of this tyrant. But it did happen. 11 states revolted. Those are in this map. This map shows what Mexico looked like in 1821. The red portion are several of the states that revolted against uh, the dictator Santa Ana. They were San Luis Potosi, uh, Caratara, Durango, Guanajuato, Michalcan, the Yucatan, Jalisco, Nuevo Leon, Tamaulipas, and Cojila de Tejas, which also included Texas. And these red areas revolted against Mexican rule. Santa Ana, being president, commander-in-chief, quickly assembled his professional army and started putting down rebellions in Mexico. In fact, three of these areas claimed to be countries. There was the Republic of the Yucatan, and here's the Yucatan Peninsula, which we've all heard about. There was the Republic of the Rio Grande, and then, of course, there was the Republic of Texas, all claiming independence from the tyrant. In fact, uh, there was a portion of the, this revolution that almost succeeded in the interior of Mexico. The Zacatecas area was largely, uh, had a, as good an army as Santa Ana, but their rebellion was put down quickly by Santa Ana. In fact, it was put down so brutally that other areas of the republic became to tremble. So after these areas were put down in rebellion, Santa Ana's moving his army north into what we now call Texas. The events in Texas occurred simultaneously with all these independent revolts, but this is the event that triggered it. It happened in October of 1835. Texas, a part of Mexico, small town of Gonzales, Texas, had a cannon that they, were, they used to protect themselves from the Apaches, the Carancas, and other Indian tribes. The Mexican government decided they would take the arms of the Texians, as they called themselves. They would take the cannon. So a Mexican militia 
showed up, our Mexican army showed up at Gonzales demanding return of the cannon, and a skirmish in ensued. Guns were fired. The Texas Revolution was on. For your information, the Mexican government was not successful in starting or taking that cannon. It's interesting to note that the Texas Revolution started, the first battle started, because government tried to take away the arms of the citizens. Interesting enough, you go backwards to Lexington and Concord. We remember our American history. The British marched to Lexington and Concord, started the battle in the American War of Independence, and the reason? The Mexican government, or excuse me, the British government tried to take the arms, the firearms of the colonists. They were not successful. And the same event triggered the Texas Revolution. In fact, it was called the shot heard round the world. But in any event, uh, the battles and skirmishes occurred. It started in October of 1835 in this area of Texas, San Antonio area primarily. A group of Texans, really they were volunteers from all over the United States, almost every state in the United States, a half a dozen foreign countries, had assembled themselves, 187 of these individuals, along with 11 Tejanos. Tejano is a uniquely Texan name for Texans of Spanish descent. And those 187 volunteers found themselves in an old beat-up Spanish church that was 100 years old at the time that we now call the Alamo. They knew, of course, that Santa Ana had crossed into the United States or into Texas across the Rio Grande River and was headed straight for the Alamo. Those defenders, rather than leave, they decided to stay. They knew, of course, that they would not be able to defend and protect the Alamo very long because Santa Ana's army was of several thousand strong versus 187 Texans. They were led by one of my most famous or favorite persons in all of history, a 27-year-old lawyer from South Carolina named William Barrett Travis. He was the commander of those volunteers at the Alamo. And for 13 days, they held off the Mexican army. And we've heard the story in the history of the Alamo, how they withstood the onslaught for 13 days. Travis asked for help for people to come to the Alamo. No one came to help him except 32 volunteers from, yes, the town of Gonzales. And while he was behind those Alamo walls, he wrote probably the most famous letter written by any military historian or military leader in our history. It was dated February the 24th, 1836. I have a copy of this letter on my wall, as do many Texans that represent Texas in the House of Representatives. And here's what it says, and I think it's a call to freedom and liberty in the spirit of our ancestors. He said, fellow citizens, I am besieged by a thousand or more of the enemy under Santa Ana. I have sustained a continual bombardment and cannon fire for over 24 hours, but I have not lost a man. The enemy has demanded surrender at its discretion. Otherwise, the fort will be put to the sword. I've answered that demand with a cannon shot, and the flag still waves proudly over the wall. I shall never surrender or retreat. I call upon you in the name of liberty and patriotism and everything dear to our character to come to my aid with all dispatch. The enemy receives reinforcements daily and will no doubt increase to three or 4,000 in a few days. If this call is neglected, I am determined to sustain myself for as long as possible and die like a soldier who never forgets what is due his honor and that of his country. Victory or death, William Barrett Travis, commander of the Alamo. A few days later, on March the 6th, 1836, after three assaults by Santa Ana's army, the walls were breached, and every volunteer was put to the sword. William Barrett Travis.